and I am welcome back. Um, as I said in my last video, I've got a new lathe coming, and this old lathe I've got now, I'm going to be letting the kids learn on that. Um, it's flat belt drive, so if they do crash it for any reason, it's only going to slip the main belt. But the problem I've got is the four way tool post. It's got a big bow in it. Um, the worst side is so I can fit 13 thou under it um, with ease. So about 13 thou bow in it. Each corner's bowed. So essentially sitting in the. You could probably nearly pick that up, the bow in it. Bloody terrible. Um, so I've decided to build a new one. Um, this was originally a piece of um, prop shaft out of a big trawler I believe, uh, 5 inch, I've just machined the rusty crap off it um, and that'll fit on there beautifully. So I'm not real sure how I'm going to go about it, I think I'll uh, mark it all out and just use the shaper and take a bit of time but um, I've only got a power hacksaw and I don't think it'd be that easy to try and um, yeah, cut the bulk of it off in a sense. So I'm going to have a look at it and see what I come up with, I'm not sure yet. But um, yeah, it should be a good build. Um, I can't see it being much of a drama. This, I think this one here, I don't know whether it's the original or not, it's, it's uh, obviously lasted alright. So anyway, um, I'll bring you back when I've worked out how I'm going to go about all this. Um, yeah, see you soon. Alrighty, uh, I think I've got it sorted. Plan is, I just thought I'd go with the shaper um, instead of trying to mount it in the hacksaw, and yeah, shouldn't take all that long to do this anyway. Take a bit of time, but um, I chose to cut it on the short side, so if I had the vice turned the other way and cutting it on a long stroke in the longer direction, I'm frightened it might grab it and I roll it up out of the vice. Um, I just don't want to take any chances and crash the shaper. Um, that'd be devastating. So I'll uh, yeah, I'll just cut it this way, and hopefully I can. It's fairly hard this material. I'm hoping I'm going to have a bit of luck with the tool. I might have to do a couple of grinds and get a happy medium. Um, change my way on it a bit, I'll just see how it goes. So I'll get set up and make a cut off camera, make sure everything's going to be right then I'll bring this back. Righto, we've made a start. Uh, first of many hours I'd say. Um, yeah, it's a, it'll take time. I'm just feeling the way with the tool to make to see how it's going to go. I don't want to drive too hard, like I said before. Uh, no points in breaking it. So, when I progress down in the next few hours, I'll bring you back. It'll be a long night. A uh, little update. Um, I've put the shaper up to the middle speed. It's a three-speed shaper. Uh, so it's got, it's got three section pulley. You go fast, medium, and slow. Um, what I've done is I counted the strokes over ten seconds, multiplied it by six, and I worked it out at sixty-one strokes a minute. Uh, I've bought a old school rev counter 
uh, yeah, it's in really good condition. Um, it says here to calculate your feet per minute. Um, you take your reading and then divide it by two. Um, I took a reading, simply off holding it on the side of the ram, uh, watching the gauge, and then uh, yeah, and I locked it into place on the forward stroke. You got to be fairly quick to do it. I done it three times. Uh, each time I got pretty much the same reading every time. And that to me works out if I've done the sums right and I've done it right, works out at 35 feet per minute. So I see it's been cutting fine. Um, can't see any drums with it. Um, still get the nice chip, as you can see. Still a good chip coming off it. Uh, they're not getting hot by any means, they're not changing colour. Uh, there is a bit of smoke coming off, that's how you cut cutting oil which is natural. So yeah, we're, we've sped the show up. I don't normally work to a plan or a drawing, I just make it as I go and normally wing it. Um, this time I've, yeah, I've decided to do a plan drawing. Um, yeah, a bit of old school maths made easy calculator. Uh, it's just a quick reference so if I am using the load at the same time and I want to check something I don't have to say pull the tool holder off and measure it or whatever it's all what I need from the pages so yeah it's all pretty much all there. Uh, something different really I don't normally work to a plan or have a drawing I just yeah, make it as I go. This is where I'm up to. Uh, both sides done. I've flipped it. Uh, I've touched off up top up here. Um, I'm not going to be taking overly heavily cuts on the top. Um, it's a fair bit of stick out of the vice. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't really trust this vice that much. Um, it is well used. Uh, this vice, he, the old fella owned before me, did use this vice on his drill press. Uh, quite a bit from what I can gather. Um, so, I'm just going to take a little bit easy. So, yeah, take a little while to get to cut this down. Um, make a start, I suppose. slowly getting there on this third side. One thing I do have to make for the shaper is a um, proper chip guard. All I've got is a piece of aluminium plate there. Um, it stops some of the chips but we 
nice to stop a few more. It seems just to scatter everywhere and everyone's cracking because they're getting it in their feet when they walk out past the side of the shed. Don't know why. It must hurt. Anyway, we're slowly getting there. Yeah, we're still gnawing away at it. Okay, here we are. It's all squared off finally. Um, I'm going to start cutting into the cutting the recess into it now. Um, plan is I'm going to work my way over. It'll be on an angle down here, obviously, with this tool here, and just and just show this edge. And I can flip the tool the other way and then cut down this edge and square that one up. And hopefully I should join up in the middle here and have a nice recess in there for the tools to sit in. So off camera I'll do a couple of cuts and get everything right so I'm not trying to work around the camera for a little bit. Uh, make sure everything's going to be spot on and then I'll bring this back. Right, uh, I've done a couple of passes. Uh, I've set up an indicator down over this side here. I just um, work up to in the end, end of the cut, sneak up to it. Um, yeah, I've never done anything like this, this kind of stuff. Um, I'm cutting the big grooves like this. Uh, I'll probably do it the arse about front way, but um, just learning as I go. If I'm doing it wrong, please tell me. Yeah. I'm not really worried about this side here. Um, I can always come back and trim it up as I go. I want to get a bit further over. Uh, I'm just trying to get past this mark. It's the top side mark here. Anyway. So I'll just keep etching it down. I'll end up with this all cut out in here. Um, and I'll slip the tool and I'll do this side over here then. That's the plan, whether it works or not, who knows? It's not in the bin yet, as I always say, which is a bonus. the auto feed off at uh, around 50 down then I hand feed it from there. Hand feed it from there. Touch 
Fischbein. This is where we're up to now. We've um, cut down the side here. I'm down to depth here. Um, I'll cut out this side now. Um, then I'll come back in and I'll do a very light skim down here and just face this one off. So we're getting there slowly. Just a quick update. Uh, this is as far as I got. Um, I'm running out of battery and I want to get this part finished today, so um, I'm only going to, all I want to get done today is knock this triangle out of the middle and just flatten the floor off. So. The battery's about to die, um, so yeah, that's where I'm up to. So that'll be one side done then.